the October 2023 IJUC Lunch and Learn. Um, we have Lauren here from Esri, who's going to talk about some ArcGIS images for ArcGIS Online. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your knowledge with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. If you have questions during this presentation, um, you know, there's when there's natural pauses, feel free to chime up. Um, if you're uncomfortable doing that or don't have access to a mic, um, please put it in the chat. I'll be watching that. And so um, I can pay attention and do that um, if anything comes through the chat. So uh, is there anything else you need, Lauren? No, I think I'm ready to go. All right, go for it. All right, thank you so much. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Happy lunch and learn. Uh, my name is Lauren Belker. I'm a solution engineer out of Esri's St. Louis office. I work primarily with local governments, cities, and counties throughout the Midwest and across the country to help you configure GIS solutions as kind of a, a tech evangelist for Esri. So today we are going to talk about ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online. This is Esri's solution for image hosting and analysis in the cloud. But before we jump into that and get into those details, we're gonna talk a little bit about why we're offering this and why it's important to organizations like yours. So imagery is a foundational data source for information that supports all kinds of decision makings. Organizations are using imagery to support precision mapping and reality capture so they can create accurate site models, base maps, and other foundational content that supports their business. They're exploiting imagery to perform analysis and extract observations. So for use cases like inspection, monitoring, and intelligence. And they're using imagery to identify spatial patterns that help them understand the natural and built environment. So things here like urban growth or crop yields, land cover, habitat loss, and more. And that imagery comes in all kinds of formats, right? So from multiple formats, platforms and modalities from many different service providers. And you really need a system that lets you manage, search for, discover and analyze all of your imagery to support workflows from across the organization. And the imagery management capabilities of ArcGIS are really designed to bring all of that together, right, into the geospatial platform, into the infrastructure. And ArcGIS is the system for managing all of that imagery. It provides photogrammetry, AI, and raster analytic tools uh, that support each of these use cases. So at the center of this vision for imagery is image services, right? And image services provide a modern way to empower users to work with massive amounts of imagery from many different sources. And they provide much more than just a search and discovery catalog capability. So you have multiple images within a service, even collections with thousands and thousands of images can be treated as a single virtual image for for visualizing and processing those large areas of interest. There are server side processing tools that can help be scaled to dynamically create that imagery information products on demand. GeoAI deep learning models can use imagery services to automatically find features and populate GIS layers. And desktop and web apps across the organization can consume these image services for visualization. They can perform their own analytics, um, exploitation, and map production tasks. And you can access these services, you know, in dashboards, web maps, story maps, all across the platform. So, because image services let everyone access and work from the same imagery, they help you eliminate that redundant image data silos and they really help democratize the use of imagery across the organization. So, ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online is Esri's complete software as a service for leveraging those image services to support your work. It allows you to host, analyze, and stream that imagery and those raster collections in ArcGIS Online. So now let's take a look at how organizations can benefit from using ArcGIS Image Online with your imagery. 
ArcGIS Image Online helps you make imagery accessible across your organization. It gives you flexibility to host and stream imagery in the way that best suits your workflows. So whether you're serving imagery from uh, of a construction site or a city or a post post event imagery, ortho mosaics, or even multi multi dimensional rasters, you can publish imagery as intelligent tiled services with super fast performance. Tiled imagery retains that pixel information so that users can perform that client side interactive analysis and apply enhancements to the imagery. You can also stream dynamic imagery that offers on the fly processing and dynamic mosaicing. So together, these options let you seamlessly integrate imagery in a variety of applications and workflows. And in addition, you have control over who has permissions to upload, publish, access, and consume your imagery, just like you do all the other content in ArcGIS Online. So with ArcGIS Image Online, you don't need to really worry about that infrastructure management piece, right? So it's because it's software as a service. You can work with imagery as fast and performance services because you're working in a secure and scalable SaaS environment. And Esri actually manages that infrastructure for you. So because ArcGIS Image is available in ArcGIS Online, you can get that logging and those other advanced reports to help you keep up with your organization's imagery related activities. And you can also integrate with your organization specific logins, say if like you're using SAML, for example. ArcGIS Image Online simplifies that image management by making it easy to publish and manage those image and raster collections. You can upload a variety of image types and formats like ortho mosaics, satellite scenes, aerial images, uh, elevation, even bathymetry, and metadata for these images is preserved. So that allows users to access relevant details about your imagery. An ArcGIS image provides a simple web experience for uploading and publishing that imagery in just a few simple steps. And this means that image publishing can be accessible to everyone in the organization who really needs it. You can process imagery at scale using powerful interpretation, image analytics, and raster analytic workflows in the cloud. This helps you use your image imagery to gain that situational understanding, and you can extract uh, insights and support various decision-making processes and workflows. And you can apply these analytics through an intuitive web experience. So use tools in ArcGIS Pro, or you can even use the Python API to develop these customer custom raster, raster function chains and the machine learning workflows. And once you finish that analysis, you can actually use the resulting layer for further analysis, right? So incorporate it in, into custom web applications or even dashboards, reports, story maps, you, you name it, right? And all of this is powered by ArcGIS Online. So Esri's cloud SaaS environment. You can do that image processing at scale without needing to acquire and manage the infrastructure that it would take to do this. And ultimately, that helps you save time on, on all of this image processing and analysis tasks. Because this analysis is performed in the cloud, processing scales are it, it, it really is an eff it's effortless, right? So these tasks that are used to take hours or days, they can be done a lot faster. So this helps you meet the demands for your customers uh, and complete projects in a timely manner. So with Image Online, you only pay for what you use. You don't need to pay to maintain or own the infrastructure because Esri is managing that for you. And when you host your imagery in ArcGIS Image Online, it's only like one fixed price to store all of that imagery, and then you can access that imagery at no additional cost. So in addition to that, you can allocate budgets to your users to estimate the charge for analysis tasks before it's even performed. So that helps you kind of control those costs. 
So now that we've described what it is, let's talk about how it works. Right, creating powerful imagery services in ArcGIS Online is an easy four step process. Step one, you wanna upload your imagery into ArcGIS Online. And all you need to do this is just add it, you know, navigate to my content in ArcGIS Online and then under new item, choose to add an imagery layer. Step two is to select the image service type, whether you want it to be tiled or dynamic. So tiled layers serve original pixel values for client side visualization and processing, where dy dynamic imagery layers provide on the fly processing and virtual mosaics. And both of these layers can be used as inputs for your raster analytics. Step three is to apply those analytic and raster templates to perform your, you're really transforming that raw imagery into useful information products. And finally, step four is to decide who should have permission to access your new image services and stream your imagery to those end users. You can use role-based permissions in ArcGIS Online to define the individuals and groups that can access the imagery or you can stream it to the entire organization. Because ArcGIS image is delivered as SaaS, you don't need to worry about that architecture on the back end. Once you've uploaded your imagery and rasters to online, you can access all of the image hosting, the storage, the analytic capabilities in ArcGIS online. And you can push out imagery to client applications by streaming it as a service uh, from your hosted Im imagery. It, it really is pretty as simple as that. So next, let's focus in on one of the most important components of ArcGIS Image Online. So this is finding spatial patterns and using imagery and raster analysis. ArcGIS Image Online lets you build and apply raster functions that transform raw energy imagery into different types of information products. There are over 150 different functions to choose from that you can chain together into a custom workflow. We'll take a look at these in a little bit. And these workflows can be saved as raster function templates, which can be used and reused and shared throughout your organization. So there's a few key capabilities of, of raster function templates. So they provide a graphical raster function editing interface on the web, which is really nice, then client-based. They allow you to use simple drag and drop to create raster functions. You can search for pre-built raster function templates or create and share your own and then string those together. And a credit calculator lets you see how many credits will be consumed before you run the process. So this helps you estimate and to control costs. And a lot of these functions will also let you preview the result before you actually run the analysis, which is pretty cool. So if you can see on the screen right in the middle, those raster function templates, it does take on very much the feel of kind of like a, a model builder or a workflow where you're chaining these items together. It's also been designed to use geo AI deep learning models to automatically extract features from imagery. So through the Living Atlas of the world, you can access a growing list of models that help you to detect and classify objects like buildings, roads, swimming pools, solar panels, just to name a few. If you haven't seen these, I highly recommend going to check out the Living, Living Atlas uh, for the deep learning packages. They're fascinating. And you simply select the Geo AI model for the features that you want to extract and behind the scenes, ArcGIS Online image will spin up multiple GPU processors to handle that extra processing load associated with those deep learning tasks. So this is a really powerful way that ArcGIS Image Online can help modernize your imagery production workflows without needing to invest in your own expensive compute infrastructure. So with that, now that we've covered, we understand what it can do, how it works, 
let's take a look at the software in action, shall we? Switch over my screen here. All right. All right, it looks like it is showing. Okay. So I want to show you today how to leverage these capabilities and we're going to do this using content that is hosted in the living atlas of the world. And we're going to anticipate the risk that climate change poses to US corn production. So, looking at this data, we can see that we've got our, our Midwest US and this area produce, produces most of the country's corn. But in these high production counties, high temperatures are really expected to increase about seven degrees Fahrenheit by 2050. Seven degrees Fahrenheit is unbelievable. That, that's a lot of degrees. Um, and so really what we're trying to look at now is what is this unprecedented warming going to mean for the future of American corn? So this inquiry can lead you to the living atlas where this question can be answered using data that is readily available in a cloud environment. Through living atlas, I can find a wealth of authoritative environmental data to do research on agriculture and climate change. And here, for example, I know I want to start with bioclimate so I can type that in. So this search yields readily available authoritative climate models and historical data for future predictions, right? And so if I'm interested in max temperature and annual precipitation, wettest month, for example, I can star these and capture, um, capture these layers as favorites. I can also use the environment filters here um, to, and in order to find additional information that I need for my analysis. So if I wanted to look at, for example, elevation and bathymetry or tilted hill shade, let's see, oh, there it is. It's already starred here for us. So now we have these pieces. We collected our layers, and next I can extract these these selected layers and bring them into a web map to perform my analysis. So here, using raster functions under raster analysis, right out of the box, ArcGIS provides more than 150 raster functions to perform advanced analysis, like geometric and radiometric connections, mathematical operations, and much more. And I'm not sure why this is hanging. Maybe my needed to refresh my website. Analysis. There we go. <laughs> so I can string together. These are, you know, all of the raster functions that are available out of the box here, and I can string them together. So if I wanted to open the custom air editor and I wanted to look at current corn suitability model. So this model, you can see I built to study corn suitability. So we've taken our input environmental data and we've normalized optimal conditions and applied a weighted overlay to derive the suitability map. So environmental conditions, suitability, weighted, and that gives us the output, right? So we would kick off the analysis and a few minutes later, we see the results of the raster model with darker green areas indicating high corn suitability centered right around Iowa. But now I can plug in our future climate data into the same raster model to derive predictions on future corn suitability. So as I turn on the results, watch how the center of the corn belt moves from Iowa to Wisconsin. So about 350 miles to the Northeast. 
So now if we wanted to zoom in and compare our model with what we actually see on the ground, um, we would actually see up here, not only in Madison, Wisconsin, that these aren't really, you know, oops, there, pop back out. We're going to see that this area really provides a full coverage. So these crop suitability and corn su suitability is not going to be favorable um, in any of our major waterways. But those areas, you know, and being good geographers, we know that we're not going to grow corn at scale in the middle of open water. So we can actually use our raster models again to go in and remove, uh, clip out those land cover differences, right? So um, being able to uh, look at current conditions, land cover, and then we can remove all of our non cropland and symbolize it to mask out all of those areas, those urban areas, suburban areas, water, lakes um, that we want to mask out of our final data set. And I think it's really important to note that even using these raster functions that in here, we didn't have to write code to do this. We've been able to combine steps like clipping and raster algebra into one neat raster model, right? So, Final raster showing impact to climate change. Um, here we go. Uh, here it is. It's the map that gives glimpse into the future uh, of the areas um, that we really want to focus on that provide few further value to agricultural agricultural stakeholders. So needing to quantify at the county level to bring current yield data. So I can aggregate this data on the raster by county and then symbolize with the risk and the volume of corn production. So looking at the final results, that gives us a glimpse into the future. So we can see where, you know, adaptations are most urgently needed to counter the effects of, of climate change. We see a lot here in, in Nebraska. Here's Kearney County, Nebraska. And there was one even in Iowa that stuck out to me. I think it was Henry County. Yeah, it was a high risk for a 13.49 decrease um, in corn suitability due to that climate change based on predictions from 2050. And then if we were to come up here into Wisconsin, we can see that Monroe County, Wisconsin, Wisconsin has a very high opportunity for um, for an increase in uh, pro corn suitability and productivity. So really what I did here is I just performed an at scale raster analytics in the cloud using readily available living Atlas data and ArcGIS image to get to the right science and dive deep into these really important issues of the future. So how do we get started with ArcGIS image online? Fortunately, because it's a SaaS offering, there's nothing to set up or install. All you need to do is license ArcGIS image capabilities for users in your organization. There is some pricing information here. Um, users with a creator user type can add ArcGIS image for ArcGIS online as an extension to their user type license. And this user type extension allows them to publish and manage imagery layers in ArcGIS online and perform image analysis. After that, you use ArcGIS online credits. So this is the currency for premium services in ArcGIS online. And this consumes services like storage, dynamic imagery hosting, and imagery analysis capabilities. But don't forget that any of those analyses that you're running have that credit estimator, and a lot of them also have the preview functionality there as well, so that you can preview the result before actually performing the analysis and spending those credits. We've also provided a set of resources to help you get familiar with ArcGIS Image Online. This includes a get to know me guide uh, that walks through key concepts and capabilities, as well as an implementation guide that provides a closer look at the steps and best practices that, and that are involved with getting set up 
with ArcGIS image. So with that, I'd just like to thank you for the opportunity to come speak with you today about ArcGIS image for ArcGIS online. This is our solution for image hosting analytics and streaming in the cloud. So thank you all very much for your time and attention. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I have a question, Lauren. Sure. If, if you're not so much concerned about in that uh, analytics, but just the hosting of the imagery, is this a good solution? I think, I think this usually is going to be more for those that are interested in the raster functionality. So in the analytics piece of it. So if you're, you're doing vegetation indices, um, you know, you're looking at NDVIs, uh, things like that. I, this is what I would, I would recommend for that. Um, just for image hosting, it's probably not going to meet your needs but that that is a, that is something that every organization has to decide right um for for some the cost may not be prohibitive um for others they would just assume you know doing um, do, using credits storing imagery on their own infrastructure or using something like premium feature data store to store imagery that eliminates all credits for ArcGIS on online organizations. So I really do think that it it depends on the org. Can you speak? I know this isn't quite, but when you said premium data in storage, oh what yeah. Exactly is that? <laughs> so premium feature data store. Um, if if you haven't if you haven't heard of this, um, might might go to to the features to the um, Esri site and check it out. I'm pulling it up now. I'll throw a link in the chat. So really, what this does is this augments your ArcGIS Online subscription for your feature data storage. So it also supports you know intensive querying, editing, and analysis. And what it does is it actually it ups the feature storage to one terabyte of data. And it also provides you with dedicated compute resources and dedicated feature data storage resources um, for, for feature data. I do know organizations that have done premium feature data store to host all of their imagery, including the historical, excuse me, historical imagery um, that they use. Um, it's been really very beneficial for them. And actually, um, it removes all credits and credit usage for ArcGIS online because you're you're already using and you're dedicated and you're paying for dedicated feature data storage at that point. Excellent. I am not sure I was totally aware of that option. Oh, I love this option. I feel like this is something we, we really don't talk, <laughs> um, don't talk about enough, but it can, it can be very beneficial for some organizations. Can, um, if someone, if a, Somebody was interested in having their organization look into it. I assume there's um, their support or uh, their, uh, oh, I don't know what their customer support person. They can help them kind of decide if that's going to be financially a good choice for them. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out to your Esri account team. Certainly you can always reach out to, to me as well. And I can get you in touch with those individuals. If you're, if you don't talk to them on a frequent basis or don't know who they might be. It is also available on our marketplace, so you can purchase it and add it directly to your cart um, on the website. Does anyone else have any questions or anything else they'd like to discuss? Kind of quiet today. Okay, well, I guess we'll be guess. ending this lunch early. I did want to let everybody know that um, we are going to be skipping our lunch and learn uh, online for November. November, um, there are several, um, some GIS day activities going on at Iowa State. I know of some, I know that the Eastern Iowa is going to have their GIS meeting in November. So um, with those conflicts and the holiday, We've decided that um, there's not a good meeting day, so we're going to skip November and, but we'll be sending out some information for December's um, and then after the, the beginning of the year. 
um, to continue our lunch and learn. And as always, you can always find all of our lunch and learns recordings on our IJIG YouTube channel. And if anyone isn't sure how to get to that, just ping me, let me know, and I'll make sure they can get to it. Thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing that information. I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, Micah. I'm glad to be here today. I hope everybody has a great GIS day next month. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.